welcome back to Blank Canvas. I'm Rita Welchert, uh, Red Roof Studio. We're doing a demonstration of the uh, garden sculptures, the garden spirits. And I'm just adjusting my little, where I see little cracks. We did this in the last class. We skinned her out. So the first part was making a skeleton, eight heads, uh, get the right proportions put the right volume in, we fleshed her out, and now we put the skin on. So putting the fabric on is like putting the skin on the body, which gives her her strength and keeps everything together, like it does with us. Um, I'm going to do the face. Everything was done in strips. The strips we use are about an inch wide, inch and a half wide. For the face, however, I don't want it to look like a mummy, so we're going to use a piece of fabric out of the sleeve of a t-shirt. Do you recognize the sleeve of the t-shirt? I cut the seams off right there. This part I'm not going to use, so I'm going to use the rounded part here. It's just a little trick I have that I don't end up with a huge amount of fabric around the face. So I take this part, measure the top of the head to the bottom of the head, and that's about to the chin, about there by there. So here, now I'll show you how I cut this. So it's folded double, and then I'm kind of going to make an eye patch out of this, and I'll show you why that is, so I don't end up with here we go, I cut it like this, there it is, it's like an eye patch, and now you'll see how it curls, so the curl I put on her face like so, I have the whole piece of fabric, and then I tie one to the top and the other one goes around her neck, and then I have one smooth piece of fabric in front of her face, so that's why only for the face I need to do it um, in one piece rather than wrapping it around and around and around with a strip, which doesn't look so nice. So um, here we go. I'll get it saturated again with and massage it into the fiber because the medium doesn't do anything by itself, neither does the t-shirt. So you can't paint it with the medium over top. You have to work it into the fiber. Now it's all in there now and if you haven't don't have it on a spot, it sometimes shows that you see that it's not there. So you'll make sure it's everywhere. Move your tools out of the way. So now I'm gonna wrap it around her face that it's smooth in the face. So make sure your tin foil is nicely smooth in two so you don't have all this wrinkly stuff showing. You can have extra fabric on the top of her head because that's where the hair is gonna go. That's not gonna matter, but in her face it's very important that you have it nice and smooth like this. And just her nose is going to show. And that'll be all the features you will see. Now there is a way to make the entire face, but that's in another class. <laughs> you can make fingers, you can make toes, you can make the features in the face. All that is possible. But I never teach that in the first class because you'll get so frustrated with all the fiddly diddly things you can do. Um, I'll save that for another class. So now this can be wrapped around on the top of the head. Here we go. Excess material can be put there, as long as you don't put it in her neck, because she needs a nice skinny neck. Okay. Every time you get your hands really dirty, have you noticed that? You get an itchy face. And I have her itchy face right here. And I'm sure I have. <laughs> Um, some of this glue on my face. Now I'm going to put this down because now I want to see what this looks like on the base and I will position her the way I think she should be sitting. I have a few strips left here for my next sculpture. My hands are here. Her head is covered. Do you see her nice silhouette now that she has a cute little nose and no hair yet. So I decided I was going to have her sit like this. Some, how did I do that now? Wait, no, she was sitting the other way. This is how, there we go. This is how she was going to sit. Yes, that's really cute. I'm going to turn her torso a little bit. Her hand is going to fit on this, so she's hanging on to this. Her foot is sitting on the base here, which is quite cute too. Do You see her foot is going to fit right here. You got to make it real. You can't just have her float on this base. And then her hand is going to go onto this one here, which would be quite cute to do. There. And now, I'll, and then you tippy toe her feet, make them stick out like she's pointing, because they're always very elegant, those fairies. There. There. 
you make everything look really cute. There we go. So now the first thing we're gonna do is the hair and then the draping. Now she's not gonna have much draping, but some. She's not gonna wear a lot of clothes. I have some of the medium here. I have some of the hair here. Here's the hair. And this I get from Holland. It is a cotton factory uh, leftovers. And it, this is what I use for hair. It's cotton. We don't have manufacturing of t-shirts here in Canada, so I get this from Holland. This is my hair. It's all leftovers that come from, um, you know, cotton string is what it is. Makes great hair. So what I'm doing is right now is I'm un, um, it's not at all together. So the more texture I make, like the more. It's really about texture, it's not about hair, 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 but it's gotta have a different texture than the fabric of her clothes and the skin. So in order to do that, I pick it apart, take about the amount that I think I need, about yay, I think, there. Then I will put a color in, because this is bleached, no, it's unbleached cotton, which will not be the same color as the girl is, so I want it, her hair to be green as well. So the medium can be colored, and I haven't colored any of it because I like the green that I had. But for the white hair, I would like to use a little, this is just pure pigment that I put in. The whole container goes into a liter if you want to color the whole liter. Uh, most of the time I color my uh, medium, but in this case I hadn't. I just wanted some of that green which looks really nice because I'll finish that with gold and it looks just stunning. So here's the colorant. I wanna make sure the hair will be green rather than white. So here we go. Now I'm gonna put the hair that I want in there. Did I have two toothpicks? No. Well, I'll have to think of something else to use. I can use something. So the hair will be saturated with the medium. Make sure I have it everywhere. So, and I don't want to make one knot out of it so it just knots all up again and I can't get it apart. So I'll take the whole sheet like this, turn it over to the other side, make sure that is all saturated. And then, now we'll put it on top of her head. Let's see. There we go. There. And, no, I thought I would have had some, no, I don't. So I will use my pliers instead. So here we go, we're gonna drape this on top of her head and see what it looks like. Here we go. So it's all going to be about texture, the hair. And I can pick at that a little later to um, make that look just the way I want it. I want a lot of hair in her face because I didn't give her eyes, I didn't give her lots of features. So then usually I put the hair, maybe I should take it off to, no, I can turn the base this way. I'll turn it a little bit so I can get the hair on properly. And pull a lot of it in her face because it looks very cute if she has hair in her face rather than a bald head. And this way, you don't see, you only, you only want to see the nose. That's the only feature she has. And she doesn't need any more because nothing else is that detailed either. So here we go. Make sure there's hair, yep, there's hair everywhere. There. And you can play with that. That's what I use usually the toothpicks for, to play around with it and make it airy. But here we are. That's the hairdo she has, and I found this on a little baby's dress. So I shop at Value Village for t-shirts, or I take my son's, or my husband's. But this I found at Value Village was a little kid's dress, and it had this little, usually I can do this with the t-shirt as well, but if you find these little finds like this, and you think I can use it for a little, I'm gonna use it for a little skirt on here. So sometimes you find these beautiful little uh, fabrics that are perfect for your project. So I'm gonna put this in the medium again. I'm gonna wrap it around her. And I will think, I don't know if I need all, no, I'm gonna do all of it just in case. 
So this is the medium, make sure it goes everywhere. So I will show you with the other piece that I have there how you can do different kinds of draping, but this one will be done by just using <laughs> this fantastic find that I had. It was a little, I think a six month old dress it was, and this was on the bottom of it, and I thought, oh, I don't have a six month old. I can buy that and cut it up. And there we go, it's all done. I'll move that out of my way again. And I'm gonna see how cute it is to drape this on this lovely little fairy, because this, I just want a little skirt on her. Okay, this is gonna be the top. There we go, and I put it very low on the waist because I don't wanna lose the shape of her. She has such a cute shape there. But I don't wanna cover that up with fabric, and I'll show you how I on the other side in a minute how I did that. So there, and then I'll put this one underneath to get another layer in there. Oops, that was already starting to glue hands. So she will get two layers of this. And I have way too much, so then I will take some off. Hang on a second. And goes underneath. Oh, this is just too cute. Sometimes you're lucky and you just find these things and you can just use them just as it's. Look at how cute this folds. <coughs> and especially with um, um, this uh, technique, I love, like I said before, I love the the, the folds in the fabric, because that's the hardest thing to do if you are drawing or painting, or you try to do fabric, but here it is, the fabric itself. And then when it gets a little harder, you can lift it and give it a more curlier edge. And look how cute this looks when it's in place. Here's a little skirty. And I had a little short one. I don't know if that was worth doing. Sure. I'm going to give her a little top. Stick that in my medium. Make sure I get it everywhere. So your little pieces that you have left, you can just do some fun things like this. Oh, yeah, look how cute she is when you put that on her. There we go. That was another part of the dress. It was a very cute dress, but now it's still a cute dress. Look how lovely that is. And there you go. Now, once this is hard, we're gonna finish it with gold, but I can't show you that because that one will run out of time. But in the meantime, I have these ones made. So this is one that I did yesterday. Oh, and it has the white hair. And I will be doing the finishing on this one, the gold finishing that I will do on this one as well. Her hands will have to be there. Make sure that they're attached, that her foot is attached here, and then she'll glue right onto that sculpture. So this is one I did yesterday, and I will make some finish so you can see how I finish it. And here's one I haven't finished draping yet. I just wanted to make sure you could see how you can finish the draping. So here she is, that's this one. This one is finished draping. And this one, I will do a different kind of draping. So usually when my body is done, I'll take another piece of fabric, one piece, a rectangle, and I'll start draping it and try different things that maybe might look good as a dress or she would look pretty in. So I'll start in a diagonal and I'll play with the fabric for a while that I have. Um, Try different things out, what looks good for her to wear. And I'll, I won't have the medium on there yet because I don't I want to be stuck with one shape that I might not like. So this looks interesting right now. See? But there might be something else I can do. So I know that once it gets wet with that medium, it'll do something different again. So this is kind of cute. Oops, but she's getting a little risque looking there. Let me see, can't have that. So with one piece of fabric you can do some, that's actually quite nice. 
I might just do this like this. So that's just a rectangular piece. So I have this option. I can pull this down and lovely pleating there. Oh, maybe I'll do this. Or there is another one. I can also do, no, nope, like this, drape it around like so. Maybe. Longer. Can I or not? Hmm. Oh, maybe I'll do the, I'm going to get it wet and I'm going to drape her with this. So back in the medium it goes and I'll drape the skirt on there. So just so you get to see that there's other ways to use the fabric. That was kind of a cheating one when I found that fabric already made on that little dress. And sometimes you find little t-shirts with beadwork on there or patterns on there and they are awesome to use too. So use, which, uh, go to the store and find fun little t-shirts. Or if you have a family member you want to take their t-shirt from, you'll put their spirit in the sculpture. So that's a fun way to do too, to use your own family's t-shirt. <laughs> but the cheap ones, I wouldn't bother with buying brand new ones because that's kind of costly. So buy the, buy the old ones, recycle. Here we go, over the top, through here. See how we did that. Every time I do this, it turns out different. But So I had a rectangular piece of fabric that I just start playing with and start draping it around. And then when that is done, we'll put on the gold. Ah, let me get this through. Sure, that's harder now than I did it the first time. The shoulder. I should actually put her on the wheel so you can see it. We'll do that after. So you can see the whole angle of this. There. Now she's already feels quite attached to the piece of wood, but she'll be even more so when I'm done with this. Okay. I did it different. It's different than the first one I did. No. This is my favorite part when I get all this pleading in there that I don't get when I work with clay. Look at this. Ta da! And on this one, you can create movement with this and. Yeah, some really nice shaping here with the fabric. There we go. And it doesn't have to make any sense because you'll never wear a dress like this, I know that. But in my storybook, you can. And this is just how we have this dress. And I like it. So who's gonna argue with that? So watch the draping. You get to play with this one a little bit more and get it just beautifully and you have quite a while to play with this still. So there we go. Here she is, draped, this one. And now I'm going to show you how you finish it on this one with uh, the metallic look. So we're going to get some, and I hope I still have time to show you that. I do. So here we go. So this is the weather coating. And so when your sculpture is dry, and give it a few days before the really cures. Um, the metallic will make it that look. Uh, and you can do this once it's dry to the touch, but uh, to seal it with the weather coating, you gotta wait for it to set a few days, make sure it's really hardened, and then um, you uh, seal the whole thing with the weather coating. It's very watery, as you can see, so I'm gonna just drop some of the weather coating with the metallic. The metallic is a powder. Do not breathe that in. And I'm gonna mix this in with the powder, the weather coating, so I get a nice consi creamy consistency. And this will give you that finished look that you get, that a true bronze will give you. So a little bit more powder in here. So you wanna have a nice metallic 
uh, look to this, not that it's too runny, it needs to be a little creamy, there we go. And then we'll finish this. And the nicest thing is on the true bronze, wherever the fabric gives it this, um, raises it, is where you get this shine on a true bronze. Now, a true bronze won't be yellow, I don't think, but this gives it that lovely emphasis on the pleating. Now, you don't want to put the metal where it's not interesting. I only want to put it where I want to emphasize how beautiful it is. So I can give her little shoes, but if you can see here what the metal does on the draping. So I'm just going against the folds not in between the folds, and I'm giving her this metallic look. I love it in the hair too, so I'm gonna give her some gold in her hair. I'm not gonna do her face, because that's not so detailed. I didn't do a good job on the face. I just left a nose there. But see, just on this area here is interesting. Now I turn it around, and I'm gonna do it on this here, and especially the folds, because I love the folds. And... Here we go. So this kind of gives it that finished look. And then in a couple of days, I coat it completely with the transparent uh, weather coating, and then she can go outside and sit out in the winter, in the summer, and wherever you want. So if you want to get more information about this uh, um, sculpting technique, you can contact me on Facebook or by email, redroofstudio at gmail.com. Um, there's other art groups in Brooks that do painting. There's a painting club, Newell Sagebrush, and there is a, uh, a ceramics, a clay group uh, at the Guild. It's called the Guild in Brooks. They do beautiful pottery, and you get to use their wheels and their kilns and all their glazes, which is a great opportunity to get into the clay arts. And Oh, I'm gonna give her a little shoe here too. So now you see how cute that is if you finish it off with this gold. And I would like to thank Blank Canvas for giving me this opportunity to show you how to sculpt with your T-shirt and recycle. We, uh, we love to teach here at Red Roof Studio. We do sculpting and painting and artist therapy. And I can't stop. I'm just driven by teaching art in any form. Sculpting especially because it feels to me like pure therapy. Using the human form, expressing poses, uh, body language, emotion. Painting, there's nothing more fun than to paint. I just, I'm passionate about it. I love teaching children. I think it's very important for them to use their brain properly in creating from their own imagination. It's very important to have the arts in your life and it keeps me going till I die, I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks again for watching and we'll see you again.